When you serve God, do you always complain? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing Grace is one of the most beloved hymns in all of history. It is estimated to be performed 10 million times annually and has been referenced in the anti-slavery novel Uncle Tom's Cabin and was very popular during two of the USA's greatest crises, the Civil War and the Vietnam War. It was written by a former slave trader who took part in the cruel treatment of people. He despised himself afterwards and felt he deserved only punishment, yet he was pardoned and obtained a position of trust and responsibility. He could not explain it but just attribute it to God's amazing grace. In today's gospel, the parable of the workers in the vineyard challenges our sense of fairness and justice. It is a standard of the world where you should get compensated equivalent to the work you put in. But God's justice is different. It is about mercy and compassion. It is also about His generosity and His grace. He measures our need more than our output. That is why it is very difficult to understand. A man dies and goes to heaven. Of course, St. Peter meets him at the pearly gates. St. Peter says, here's how it works. You need 100 points to make it into heaven. You tell me all the good things you've done and I give you a certain number of points for each item, depending on how good it was. When you reach 100 points, you get in. Okay, the man says, I was married to the same woman for 50 years and never cheated on her, even in my heart. That's wonderful, says St. Peter. That's worth three points. Three points? He says, well, I attended church all my life and supported its ministry in my tithe and service. Terrific, says St. Peter. That's certainly worth a point. One point? Well, I started a soup kitchen in my city and worked in a shelter for homeless veterans. Fantastic. That's good for two more points, he says. Two points? The man cries, at this rate, the only way to get into heaven is by the grace of God. St. Peter smiled. There's your 100 points. Come on in. Our generally held belief is that those who lead virtuous and holy lives deserve to go to heaven. Conversely, those who were converted in the last two minutes of their lives would still go to heaven, but not in the same luxurious room that the Lord has prepared for those who have been more good. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord in today's first reading. Everything is about grace. We are all justified not by our good works, but by God's grace and mercy. That is why the thief who was crucified beside Jesus was immediately promised paradise when he repented. Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Everything is possible with God's grace. The provisions He gives us when we pray to Him in our service, for example, is what will make our work of evangelization and our ability to help others succeed. When He commissioned us to go and make disciples of all nations, He gave us what we are capable of using. We must not envy those He blesses more, for such a privilege behooves of them more responsibility to do good. It is really up to them. It is their choice. But for them to be more giving and generous, they have to call upon God's grace. When we serve God in church or in renewal communities, we come upon people who complain a lot in their service, who belittle their leader's anointing, who rant about too many things to do, who feel service is a burden whining that they have no more time for their families and their own personal lives. Perhaps it is a failure of understanding that God's grace is all we need. When we just do our part, our divine landowner will take care of everything. St. Paul reminds us that whatever your task, put yourselves into it, as done for the Lord and not for your masters, since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You serve the Lord Christ. When you start to complain about anything and everything, Examine your heart. How is your prayer life? 
Serving in God's vineyard, one must come equipped with all these put together in his or her backpack of service. Obedience to God's anointed leaders, purity of intention and motivation, constant disposition to prayer, and trust in God's grace. To each has been given a talent to serve, a role to play, and a mission to achieve. Regardless of whether we do more or do less in God's vineyard, it is the joy of serving and making a difference in the lives of others that matter. And this we only realize if we have an abundance of God's grace. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, fill me with your constant grace so that I may always have joy in my heart and the zeal and perseverance to always serve you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.